Hey everybody, so if you manage your own rental property, you have your own tenants, your own rental contract, today I'm gonna to share with you my top three things that you have to have in your rental contract. Hey everybody, this is Mark Saunders with Saunders Property Management and welcome to our YouTube channel. We are all about investment property, rental property, and property management. If those topics interest you, be sure to click the subscribe button below. So at my company, Saunders Property Management, we've been going over our forms. We try to review our forms ever so often to get them updated and see what type of topics and, and clauses we need to add to our contracts. And I will tell you, we, we managed a lot of property and we take over property from individual owners. And it's always interesting to see when an individual investor does their own rental property, what's in their lease or what's not in their lease. And it causes a lot of issues. So I wanted to share with you my three top three items you need to have in your lease. Now there's a lot more that needs to be in your rental contract, but these three are very, very important. So number one, your late fee. I can always tell when I take over a individual property owner, if their lease is valid or legal in North Carolina by how much they charge in late fees. So in North Carolina, it is state law. You can only charge a 5% maximum 5% late fee if the tenant does not pay rent. I've seen leases before that have a 10%, 15, 20% late fee. I've seen some that charges $10 a day that they're late. Those are not legal in North Carolina. So you need to make sure if you have a late fee, which you should have in your lease, a late fee after a certain amount of time, you need to make sure that it is legal in your state. Now, every state's different. But if I get your lease in North Carolina and you're charging a 20% late fee, then that tells me right off the bat, that's illegal, that can never be enforced. And that's gonna tell me too, that a lot of other clauses in your lease are probably not enforceable in North Carolina as well. So check the uh, late fee law in your state, make sure your lease is compliant. Number two, the number two item that I would say needs to be in your lease is a prorated payment clause or statement. So in North Carolina, we just changed our state leases not long ago to include this, but in North Carolina, it has a, a law that if that is not in your lease and you take a partial payment, you waive your right as a landlord to do the eviction process on your property. So what does it mean? Let's say that your tenant owes $1,000 in rent. They come in one day and is like, listen, I'm a little low on my uh, rent this month. Here's $500. If that prorated payment amount is not in your lease and you take that $500, you've waived your right to take that tenant to court for that month to get the balance paid up. It has to roll over to the next month. But if you have a partial payment clause in your lease, and keep in mind, I'm a property manager, I'm not an attorney. You really need to speak to an attorney to get this added properly in your lease. But it needs to have something in there saying that you are allowed as the landlord to take a partial payment but still go through the eviction process if need be. If you don't have that, you take you have to basically turn that $500 away to still be able to enforce the lease. Very important when you start having tenants pay partial payments. And the third item I think is very important, my top three items that needs to be in your rental lease, you need to have the right to enter into the property while the tenant lives there. So in our leases, we have the right basically to enter the property under three circumstances. One, to do maintenance, on the property, the, the house is flooding, we need to get in there. Two, we need to be able to get in there and inspect the property. And then three, we need to be able to get in there if we're gonna sell the property or we're showing it to potentially rent it again. Say the tenant's giving you a 30 day notice, we need to be able to get in there and actually show the property. If you don't have a right to enter the property as soon as your tenant moves in, you really do not have any grounds or rights to enter, enter into the property while they're living there. So how do you know the lease is being um, taken care of? How do you know they're keeping the property up? How do you know that four other people haven't moved in that's not on the lease originally? So you, very important, you need to make sure you have the right to enter the property. And now you need to give them notice, you know, 24 hour notice, reasonable notice during the day, not showing up at two in the morning wanting to enter the property. Don't do that. But you need to have a clause in there that allows you to enter your property whenever you need to. So those are my top three items I think needs to be in your lease. Leave the comments below. I would love to hear your thoughts. What do you think is very important? What's some terms that needs to be in your lease? I would love to hear it. Thanks.